welcome back to the class everyone it is everybody's favorite time in game 3v3 just ended last week which means we have 5v5 starting this week so there's no better time for us to rank out all of our top 40 5v5 teams and this time no conquest characters <laughs> So typically when we do this type of video, we try to make it as applicable to as many people as possible. So while we are staring at several legendaries and high level characters, we will be excluding Galactic Legends and Conquest characters as they are the most difficult to obtain. And the whole goal of this video is to kind of show everyone from a roster building perspective what teams currently sit on the top and how we should be organizing each one of our every rosters. These teams are going to be put here in bulk, meaning that Gungans aren't necessarily better than a Bo-Katan Mandalore just because they're above her. And this is really nice because then you don't have to just be stuck and have to get the best team. You can kind of pick one from the top tier to start working on as a long-term goal and then just work your way down the list as suits your roster, depending on how much Kyrotech or whatever you have available to get the teams. So starting up at the very top of our list is going to be the S tier teams and really what characterizes these level of teams is the fact that they are going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe regularly season after season against galactic legends not necessarily being dependent on a data cron to do so there are some cases where omicrons will matter but it's gac and the whole video is gac focused so at the same time that needs to be included gungans are going to be at the very top of this and i realized they did have a specific data cron that was helping them in the last two 5v5 seasons that being said we have a little bit of data still existing from the first season that came out before they were actually, or they actually had their data crime. And I realized we were trying to figure out things and maybe we'll figure out a lot of cheaper counters as time goes on, but they were holding against half of the Galactic Legends and also beating half of them, which really puts them in this tier. Like they're alongside Starkiller, who while Starkiller can't beat every single Galactic Legend, he can typically beat Ray, Datacron depending, and even sometimes in some other cases, some of the other ones. So definitely seem to be a top tier team, probably defense oriented, although I assume we'll be able to figure out some budget counters this time around. Next up is going to be uh, Bogotan Mandalore. Very simple reason she's here. She has Lord Vader's number. Again, there are, can be some data current interactions that occasionally stop that. But for the most part, if you have her leadership Omicron that gives her a revive so that if Maul decides to blow up her in the beginning, which is really important, it doesn't even matter. And she can pretty much take down any variation of that team. Starkiller, we already mentioned him, kind of has raised number as long as everything is normal. Inquisitors do very well against both of the Jedi Galactic Legends as well as some of the others, depending on the case. And then next up, we actually have the Sith Trio. Now, the Sith Trio are one of the only teams in here that are not actually including any legendaries or, I guess, TB-specific characters. That being said, the Datacrons that were given to both, or not the Datacrons, the Omicrons that were given to both Treya and Savage really push this team into the next tier. And while they don't do a whole lot of things on offense against Galactic Legends, there are very few defensive or very few counters with them on defense that can actually kill them that aren't Galactic Legends or at least Galactic Legend tier. Like some of the other ones on this tier list might actually be able to beat them, but at the same time, if they're of equal or same or equal or higher value, it kind of justifies them being in this tier now the last one we're going to put is great mothers and take this with a grain of salt because this is entirely datacron dependent we really don't know that much of what this team is going to look like without the datacron so for the time being it's going to be here and the reason why we put a uh, death trooper pretty in here as the last slot is because you can't really make two imperial remnant teams so we're just going to throw them here for the time being and even then the imperial troopers get stolen by other teams at the same time so this is really the very top level. Now we're going to be moving on to the A tier. The A tier is also still going to include a lot of very good teams. Again, excluding Conquest and Galactic Legends. The big difference between the A tier and the S tier is, while the S tier is consistently beating probably multiple Galactic Legends season after season without really much help at all, the A tier is going to require a lot more nuance and finessing for them to be able to punch up in the same way to either beat Galactic Legends or some of the other teams in the S tier. A really a good example of this is going to be Darth Revan. Darth Revan obviously without Malgus is a slightly lesser team but he actually can still punch up really high against certain Jedi Master Luke comps because Darth Revan 
loves to beat up on the leader in a variety of places in his kit, and Jedi Master Luke just so happens to be a taunting leader tank, meaning you can consistently go after him, and while you can't fear him himself, you can fear the entire team. HK also has a lot of anti-Jedi synergy. While this counter does not necessarily need HK, it is very helpful with him. So overall, still a great team, even without Malgus. Next up is going to be our Phoenix friends, and while they don't typically beat a lot of Galactic Legends, again, very consistently, they can beat some of them, and they can also beat one of the teams in the higher tier, being Inquisitors, again, Datacron to Pain and where things are at. Because of Crex is unique, and you don't need the Omicron for this, you are going to get a ton of turn meter whenever you start getting a lot of debuffs, and because everyone's attacking at a turn you will get a ton of purge on your team to be able to boost you up they also they, they beat a lot of other things inquisitors are probably just the biggest to highlight because inquisitors just don't have a lot of other counters out there next up is going to be the knight's table or aka the premium jedi team assuming you don't have one of the galactic legends you do not need cal Kestis and you're to beat a Galactic Legend, you can still kind of take out SLKR, although again, it requires a lot more nuance and finessing with Bastila, Old Ben, and Hoda in here to do it, or maybe something with armor. But if you add in Kel'Kestis, you can actually do some fun things, even against characters like uh, Jedi Master Kenobi, because of the savior mechanic, as well as the revive with Jolie Binda, you can kind of come back from that, and being able to swap around turns and have an Annihilate on Cat is very important. Not a very used counter, because most people who have Jedi Knight Luke and Kel'Kestis have Jedi Master Luke, and that one's more efficient but at the same time it still exists next up is gonna be general skywalker uh, he beats ray half the time half the time he doesn't that's kind of where it ends dash himself has a pretty good outside shot against jedi master Luke, and we actually did this this last 3v3 season but it can be replicated in 5v5 as well if you have a zomicron where everyone is constantly prepared vandor will revive him pretty much till the end of time assuming vandor is still alive the reason why this matters, and I don't know if this is working as intended or not, but the way the game currently functions is that it seems that every single time that Dash comes back from the dead, this unique is stacking, meaning he's no longer just gaining 2% turn meter on critting, it goes to 4 and to 6 and to 8 and to 10. And I probably should have included footage, uh, footage from our last 3 3 match, but we got to the point where Jedi Master Luke had killed Dash so many times, if I was critting, I was turn meter looping back to back to back to back and he does you know quite a bit of damage on his own so we're able to actually kill jedi master luke that way so you can replicate it it does take a little bit of good rng for them not to just go after vandor but the ai has a tendency to want to attack the weaker attackers rather than the tanky tank given the fact that vandor doesn't actually taunt next up is going to be grievous who still has a good outside shot against seeing jedi master luke depending on the comp we also have Finn in here. Very much a defensive team for the most part, but actually can do some fun things on offense. Uh, CLS, we actually put back into this list just because, again, with, with the way it works, it needs very little push to be going up and beating things like Java. Right now, there's an attacker cron that does help quite a bit. I believe the support cron probably makes a slight difference as well. And uh, Wookiee, Scoundrel, Smuggler, Rebel, Droid, like the, the amount of tags that this team has for them to constantly get uh, pushed up is ridiculous next up is going to be afro this is again when we look at the question of nuance this team can regularly beat jabba if you fine tune it right have great mods and especially if you add in b2 to replace ig88 to constantly have the dispel and then vader with a very big hit onto boosh in the very beginning of the match so again very good uh squads not quite as good as the s tier but still doing quite a bit for your roster and at the end of the day you need more teams than six or whatever Next up is going to be the B tier. These are all, again, good teams. We're not really quite to the filler ones quite yet, but they're going to be a little bit more accessible as well, so that should give you some room to breathe. Now, first up is going to be Seer, and Seer gets kind of demoted this far down, specifically because she no longer has Malakos. And while not having Malakos is bad... It's still not the end of the world for the Seer team. As long as you have her leadership Omicron, she still kind of throws a wrench in for Bad Batch. But for the most part, it, it ends up being more of a defensive team, whereas Malakos allows them to beat a lot of things on offense. Next up is going to be Padme. And I will be honest, I really don't have any experience with this team at all whatsoever. But it seems like if you have no Conquest characters, you have no Galactic Legends, but you have everything else, this seems to be the natural conclusion. While it is very tempting to put Padawan, Obi-Wan, as well as Qui-Gon Jinn with a Qui-Gon Jinn team, and you can do that in certain circumstances, they really are built to go overall just with Galactic Republic, and I really like what Kelleron Beck and Mace Windu are already doing in that Qui-Gon Jinn team, and really, Jedi Anakin and Kiati Mundi are non-negotiable. So there is room to breathe there. It's going to be roster-dependent. I think particularly for people who have JMK, 
but don't have Queen Amidala, you're going to want to put Padawan and Master Qui-Gon with the Qui-Gon Jinn team because that's just how things will break out. You can use Mace with your JMK team, and then you also won't even have a Padme team in general. But for the most part, they were built to go GR, and Padme is just that GR. Next up is going to be Tuscans. Again, one of the things that defines each one of these squads is that they have a chance to beat a lot of the teams within the sector, but they can also punch up against one or two of the teams in the higher area. And Tuscans, they can destroy our good Phoenix friends here, as well as CLS, and maybe even some of the other ones I haven't tried that much, but those two specifically, I know from practice, they just gain way too much turn meter, and your defense goes through the roof for Tuscans, and then you eventually just make the enemy teams melt. Next up is going to be Saab, again, more of a defense-oriented team. He doesn't get Luthen the Swede, can't really play around with that, but you can still give him Drogon or Drogan or Drogon or whatever his name is. Sisters are going to end up here. I would like to put them higher, and I've been monitoring very closely overall their effectiveness against Jabba to see if they can go up a tier. It just doesn't seem to be the case right now. It kind of passes the um, question of nuance and there seems to be just be a little bit of RNG with getting Marin down to being the last survivor. But at the same time, they still beat a ton of other things. Again, looking back to the top squad, they will pretty easily take out a CLS team. And I think they even have an outside shot against the Finn team as well. So definitely a strong team, but not as good as the ones we previously listed as far as overall capping goes. Next up is going to be Bad Batch. Again, solid counter, mostly for teams that are already in here, as we previously discussed with the Seer team. If you don't have the Omicron, very good against the Qui-Gon Jinn team if they don't have Keller and Beck in there. Have a pretty good shot against Admiral Radis too. So very much tied to this B tier. Wampa is able to punch again a lot of things in the B tier, like Aiden or even Mon Mothma, which actually is going to be slightly below this. Has a pretty good chance against General Grievous that has dropped a little bit with the stop Omicron, but if you are modded correctly, you have enough health, and the enemy team isn't just totally cracked. It is also still a solid counter there. Adrad, this team realistically is higher right now because of the Rogue One Datacron, but again, we're this is more for roster building than it is for the actual season right now. And Rogue One, they can, they're sneaky, though. They can beat a lot of the other Empire teams that aren't ready for them. I know we're not talking about them right now, but they have an outside shot against Moff Gideon. I'm actually even using them to beat Inquisitors right now with their current Datacron, but even without that, they pretty easily slap both Aiden and Veers. Next up is going to be this Bounty Hunter team. This is not like the end-all, be-all Bounty Hunter team. You very much can use Boss Lead and then Fennec in the fifth slot. The reason why we've done this is because for where I'm at, this is the most universal Bounty Hunter team, being that Aura Sing contract does not require you to target any one character you can go after whoever you want as long as you are buff and stealth or rather sorry just buffed at the same time which is rather easy because even when you go up against pretons where boss will be very limited or sync can get contract and then mando can annihilate someone and then with zam speed boost you can get out there really quickly next up is going to be imperial troopers they turn me to rush someone they just destroy them pretty simple Next up is going to be the C tier. Now, these teams aren't exactly bad, but they more often than not are what I call filler teams. And they're not really something that you work for within themselves, but they're a team that you get because you decided to work on other things. And because you don't have 12 million GP in every other team in the game, you're going to want to utilize them in some fashion. So starting out with the very top is actually going to be a Newt team. And now this probably isn't the wisest choice of using Watt. You probably would want to use him with C if you have him. But again, looking at a roster where we're imaginary roster with no Conquest characters, no Galactic Legends, he still fits in very well with Newt Gunray's overall leadership here. Django for some good damage, Count Dooku to stealth, and then Druidica just because we kind of ran out of other Separatist characters. Next up is going to be Mon Mothma. Without Luthen, she's not doing too great. Really, and this kind of bugs me, the team is good. The problem is, for whatever reason, CG specifically engineered and designed two teams, not one, but two teams that specifically counter her, being Wampa, who, you know, has it out for rebels overall as well as Aiden who very specifically targets teams that attack out of turn constantly so she really doesn't have a lot of space on defense because there's two pretty accessible counters to her and overall on offense her biggest thing and I don't mean to like this isn't a put down to her but her biggest thing is usually killing solo galactic legends which is within itself value but you know it's less so than a lot of the other teams we have here next up is going to be bastila and basically this is just where your leftover jedi go assuming you make a super jedi comp with jedi revan farther up it's still not bad though like grandmaster does good damage shock's a good support old ben is a good tank barris is a good healer like you can still do a lot of things with this team overall in fact if we were to steal cal Kestis and put him in this team we could probably beat him malgus so you know, maybe it is best to split those two teams up depending on where you are with your roster. Next up is going to be Sorty. Again, 
This is just requirement galore. Every single character here is needed for something or other. Maybe not at Relics, as you can very clearly see with IG-11, but it's a team you can put together and have on defense just to do something to prevent your opponent from getting 65 banners against everything. Next up is going to be Geon Oceans. Need him for Watt. Overall, really not horrible. Especially if you have all high relics, it can actually clean up some things on offense as well. Uh, we have Sana, who just recently, her and Rolo kind of got a nerf to Rolo's interaction when she was in the leadership. But overall, the st team still does have some pretty solid synergy that can be put together and put on defense. You will surprise a few people who don't realize that Sana has tenacity down, Captain Han has daze, and Rolo has ability block. Because if you know, you know. Next up is going to be the First Order, and this is pretty much the enemy or the First Order team you get left over with if you're going to be using Crew and Xylo in the Seer team. By the way, Xylo was there specifically to generate more turn meter for Crew. And if we were to fill in another uh, character role here, I don't know. It really doesn't matter. I mean, speed up from uh, SF Type Pilot is also pretty good, so that's fine. This pretty much is the team that you are going to develop if you're going after Jabba, but you don't have Jabba yet. Boba Fett does have some fun Thermal Detonator synergy, and then Boosh has Thermal Detonator detonators so that's kind of where that comes from chrysanthemum really wants everyone on the team including his leader to be hot cartels to be able to do everything that he wants to do so you can have some fun interactions there and then we got some double furball action down here at the bottom with our friendly ewoks as well as our not so friendly wookies and to finish things off we have pretty much the leftovers that man if you can avoid using them you should avoid using them and that's um i guess the resistance team after you built finn not looking too hot the jawas I mean, they can do some fun. It, it, they're, they're, they're a meme team. They're fun to use if you can get them to work. But I would not recommend anyone build them up for the sake of building them up. And then last, and I guess kind of least, is going to be Phasma, who probably doesn't even have a team after we've given the rest of the first order characters to the other two teams that we previously mentioned. So maybe this is a top 39 team, not a top 40 team. Who's to say? Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully this was helpful. Let me know what you think of the No Conquest format. Until the next time, stay awesome. Yeah. <laughs>